probably remember what with you Till McDonald's the baddest that I would turn to CEO with the shit that's a dumb motherfucker He'll always win There's no going under The top of the crown resting on his head The beast is alive He'll never be dead If he drunk before Bring it back to life Push harder for it Let us survive Show courage and strength It's okay to be scared But don't let it stop you Always stay prepared Bill show my school They're just not beginning Winners fucking win Losers talk about winning Welcome to the Bearded Beast Show. My name is Bill, and I am the Bearded Beast. Special episode today with my friend Mike Gertz. What's going on, Mike? No, just uh, just finishing work for the day, man. You got a good, safe place there. You pulled over. You're okay. Oh, you betcha. Yeah, nice roadside turnout. All right, cool. All right, Mike. Can you give my listeners just a, a little bit of history about yourself? You're married. You have kids. What do you like to do? Yeah, I'm married. Uh, married from a, a blind date set up. Wow. Kind of worked out. We've been together, married uh, 18 years now. Um, two kids. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a power lineman by trade. All right. So I had a question about the life of a power lineman. Okay. What exactly is it that you guys do? We build, maintain um, power the power system. So we build three-phase power line, single-phase power line, overhead, underground, transmission, like all the big towers you see. So do you get called uh, if there's a power outage? Uh, not not here up in like where I'm at in Canada now, but I do come to the States every year. I've been doing that for the last three years. We come and do power restoration after hurricanes and major storms. Wow. So it's got to be pretty dangerous working with power lines, right? Yeah. Yeah. You get, we, it's a little joke, but we like to get two. You get two mistakes in this trade. One is signing up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's pretty funny. All right, you mentioned something. You yeah. met you met your wife on a blind date. That's interesting to me. Yeah, um, I worked with a fella, and his girlfriend had a friend. I didn't know what was happening. He was in a band. I went to see his band play after he hounded me for hours and hours. And I got there, and I saw this, this hot blonde sitting beside his girlfriend. And I kind of realized maybe I was getting set up, and... <laughs> yeah, like 20 years together now, married for 18. Wow, that's awesome. That's a good story. Yeah, it worked out. <laughs> um, all right, so the life of a power lineman, you, you're away all week, right? Yeah, um, 21 on, 7 off right now. Oh, wow. We're slowly trying to convert. We're, we're trying to convert to 14 on and 7 off right now just to get a little bit better, more home life. Wow, so you're even working on Saturdays and Sundays. You bet. You bet. You. I worked all weekend. Wow. Well, good for you. I'm. Uh, congratulations. Yeah. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of your story too. And I'm. I'm. I'm I can't oh, wait thanks, to get man. into the story. So let's get, let's get right into it. I got some questions for you. I'm looking at your bio. Okay. You. So you jumped on a scale and you weighed 286. You didn't like that, did you? Not at all. It was. It was disheartening. When I when I got there, the problem that my issue was. What I really beat myself up for a long time on was I didn't, I didn't let that change my mind. I, like, I continued on that cycle for almost another year of, you know, getting off work, eating like crap during the day, obviously, but then getting off work, having a 24 pack or a couple of 24 packs with the boys, going to the room at 10 or 11, ordering a pizza, lasagna, whatever, and I just continued that cycle for almost another year. And what, what got me to open my head was and shake my head up is I needed new boots. So I went and bought some new work boots to, you know, as I slipped them on in the store and just kind of felt them around. I said, well, these will fit. And I got back to my room and I struggled to get them tied. I mean, I, I had to end up grabbing my pant leg, heaving my leg up into my, my inside of my calf just to get them kind of tied up onto the side, but loose enough that I could slip them on and off. So the that's what I said to myself, self, <laughs> the two eighty six wasn't yeah. enough, right? That didn't, that didn't put you nope. to a point in your mindset to say, I got to fix this. I mean, we, we all, we all do this, right? We, we want to believe things aren't as bad as they really are. And I'm not, I'm not saying that two eighty six for you was bad. I have no idea how you felt, but you didn't. So you didn't really realize the weight, or how out of shape you possibly were as you were as you were just doing your daily job, right? Yeah, and at that time I was managing an area contract, so I mean I was in my truck, you know, eight ten hours a day. Oh wow! Driving, checking on e emails, meetings, like I so I really wasn't out of the truck doing 
anything physical. So that could become very easy for someone to get out of shape, not realizing it with not a lot of movement, right? Not getting a lot of exercise. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. All right. So I saw something interesting in your bio when you couldn't tie your shoes. I found this really interesting. The, the, um, exercises you started in a hotel room. Yeah. I couldn't, like I said, I couldn't bend over and touch my toes or even tie my boots properly. So I started sitting in the chair in the hotel room and then standing up. And then I would, I would do that till I get, you know, 10, 10 times fairly easy. And in time I worked up to standing up without my hands on the arms, they'd be on my knees. And then I worked to the point where I could kind of rock myself up and stand up. I'm actually doing the movement as I'm telling you. (laughs) And then. I would, I would rock up so I could do that. And then once I, once I got good at like literally just sitting and standing without having to use the arms of the chair or my, my knees or holding on to something, that's when I'm like, I said, okay, well, let's, let's go out for a, a, a run. I was still, believe me, I was not even losing any weight at that point, but, and it was just brisk walking to start like as fast as I could walk. And it would just be for a couple of street lights, street light to street light. And then I would, slow it down and then pick it up and slow it down. And that went on for a couple of months. And then I started running. So did you measure your distance at all when you started? Were you, did you have anything? The the, the loop that I walked, there was two, uh, where I was working it was up in Fort McMurray, Alberta. Um, there's two paths I took. One was, it's, it's a really, the first half is all downhill. And then the second half is uphill. And that was a, about three miles oh, wow. round trip, go to the bottom and then back up. The other one was about two miles and it was, a, it was a nice casual kind of through the woods stroll. And that's, that's the one I started on mm-hmm. was this, this little loop. And when I got to the point where I could jog more than five or six streetlights, that's when I discovered this downhill uphill deal. So when you first started, so do you run. have do you have any idea what the two mile loop maybe took you to do? Walking to start the yeah. two mile loop, probably I'm gonna don't really remember. I'm gonna guess around forty five minutes. Okay, forty five to fifty minutes because like it was it, I labored. I didn't realize how much I had packing over top of the belt buckle. Yeah, right. Like it, there was a lot there, and then I. But and I didn't really clean the diet up a lot either, and I and I and I was drinking like a, I mean we're linemen. That's what we do on the road is, you drink to pass out, kind of just to go to sleep, right? But yep. Back when, and I, but I started running and that run, like I'd get back from a run down that hill, up that hill, you know, and the guys around back of the hotel, I'd go, I'd be looking for my water to go to my room, and they'd hand me a beer. I was just going to ask That's you how, how it went over with the with the guys at the hotel. And you just, so yeah, I'd grab a beer, I'd slam a beer with them. One turned into six, six turned into 10. Now it's 12. I haven't had any water since a five, you know, a three mile run. Yep. I'm trying to do the conversions in my head because I'm Canadian. So it's 5K, roughly three three miles. Yep. Yep. Pretty I much. Yep. So yeah. And then, then, like I said, most of the time they're all right. It depends on what door of the hotel I went out. I could get back, <laughs> could get showered, back get water in me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but if I have, if they happen to catch me, and and, and he, I don't need, I didn't need an excuse to drink back then. So did none of them joined in with you and decided that they would they would start exercising themselves? A couple of them tried, but the the beer, the beers of the boys was always more important. But you got yourself to a point where you were doing some Spartan stuff, right? Yeah, and that's that was all in that that first year when I was transformed, that first transformation, I had heard about the Spartan race. So I started Googling it and watching videos. And I thought, man, like that is crazy. And right around the same time, a friend of mine uh, was diagnosed with type two diabetes and his cousin or relative had ran one and he wanted to do one. So I said, yeah, let's go. Let's do one. Like, why not? How'd that go? So I went and, I, I wanted to quit. I was on, I remember I was on the, we were, I don't know how far from the, from the end, maybe 20 minute light jog from the finish line, a couple of obstacles left to do. And 
I remember just being down on my haunches and wanting to quit hating life, hating everything. And just a random stranger in the race. Said, what are you doing? I said, I'm quitting. I'm looking for the, the medical cart. They said, you're not quitting. Stand up. I'll walk with you. Uh-huh. And then that person walked with me and we started getting faster. And then someone else would stop and join and talk for a bit. And before I knew it, I had three or four people walking with me and we all started, we run a little bit and come back a little bit and come, and it became to the point where, yeah, I ran, I ran that race that we ran the rest of the way, probably the last 10 minutes. And you finished stopping. Which, and I finished. Yeah. With, yeah. You know, it was, it was an amazing feeling that I did it. I wanted to quit. Right. So, so much better. You know, I'm, I'm sure looking back on it now, you're glad those people came along. Right. And you didn't quit. Yeah. And that's, and I fell in love with that sport. I mean, we, I ran, I ran three or four trivectas in the next couple of years. You know, the sp- the sprint, the super and the beast. Yeah, I give. We people, ran up and down mountains. Those that that stuff's in, in, in you know that's incredible. I give you credit for doing that. I've never done one myself. I want to, but uh, I'll. They're, they're I got to I got to hit some training a little bit more a little before I start that. Yeah, they're they're crazy fun. Um. All right. So you got yourself to a good point, right? You got yourself to a point where you were moving around, exercising. You're doing some of these Spartan things. Looks like you did some CrossFit stuff. That that came after um, the CrossFit came after my my fall back down the hole. All right, so let's let's go back a second then. So you you did the Spartan races. Um, so did COVID hit first or or after the spiral back down the hole? Uh, COVID was during the spiral. Okay, so did COVID you get COVID yourself? Um. Well, when it first kind of became a thing I was actually at work and I would, I just got like a dream job working at home, you know, five days on weekends off for a small utility. And I got really, really sick. I didn't meet any criteria to get tested at the time. Tests were limited, all that stuff. I mean, but I was, I was out for, I was out for a good seven days. I don't remember a lot of it, just coughing, hacking, sleeping. Um, and then they wouldn't let me go back to work after without doctor's notes. And every time I went to the doctor, they sent me at home for another 10 days because of the chest pain that I was still suffering from. Like it was, you know, coughing up and you know, that's a, that's a lot of work, all that coughing. You walk into the bathroom and back and you're, you're gassed. Right. So oh, yeah. I, I say I had it not, not actually diagnosed with it because I didn't meet criteria. Well, it sounds to me like you had it. I had it. it sounds like you had some pretty similar stuff to what I had. So I would assume that that's probably so. All right. So you got sick. Um, at some point here, it says in your bio that you got laid off. Yeah. So that was be that was during the COVID thing. So my, my downward spiral had kind of started in about 2016. We got laid off from work. The economy kind of crashed here in Alberta where I live. Couldn't buy a job. And like I said, I finally got this dream being at home. And then that ended so that job was that the job you got laid off from yeah that was the one because i was off for uh, the initially two weeks for covid and then i was sent home for an an additional 14 days and an additional 10 days wow and because i was the newest person hired and the work wasn't really picking up due to covid i guess last one in first one out yeah when it gets when it gets real so that's when the layoff happened and Man, I I tell you, I couldn't buy a job. Wow. So and even even doing that, even doing something else other than than what your trade is, you could you get any job? Yeah. No, I then I even applied as because I got a I got here. We have different class licenses, and they're different than in the U.S. or even different provinces in Canada. But it's a class three, so um, a tandem, a, any you know, dump truck or garbage trucks, air you know, air brakes, all that. I can drive all that stuff. I applied for all that stuff. I talked to people and I just couldn't get wow. anything. And when I would talk to power line people in my trade, a few of them that I do know and we talked to, they weren't looking for anybody in my, with my level of experience. And I, I couldn't dumb my resume down enough to even get a call. Wow. All right. So you're After suffering, you're suffering some serious, serious shit now then, right? 
Um, you can't yeah. find a job. You you know you're laid off. You can't you can't buy a job like you said. So this is is this where yeah, the, no, the, no. the the down the down downward spiral began again? It's where it got worse. This is where it got way worse. It it started on the initial layoff, but it, you know around there, and then it just got worse and worse. Um, still married, s- right? Yeah. Um, Yep. How's yep. the still married, so how's the relationship going at this time? It, it, not you wouldn't you wouldn't know any different. It didn't. It, nothing was different. It was frustrating just because I was home a lot. Yeah, and I was getting upset and angry. I couldn't couldn't work. Couldn't find a job. And like I, you know, I went. I went everywhere. I I went and I did get one side gig for a week. And it was cutting grooves in cattle barn floors so the cows don't slip. Wow. And I ended up getting, because of the, the dust from the, it's all water and the dust from the concrete, I ended up getting a chemical burn all over both hands. Wow. It was it was crazy. But I mean, I, yeah, I was going to keep going. And then that was the end of that week. The guy didn't need any more help. Geez. So you, so you found something and then all of a sudden it only lasted for a week. Yeah, and he wasn't sure if it was going to be lots. He didn't. He said he had lots of work coming, but you know, it it is what it is. And the only reason I, I asked I, you how the relationship going was going wasn't anything to do, you know, per, actually with you and your wife. I I personally don't know either one of you, but as men, we really struggle when we feel we can't provide for our family, right? Yeah, but I had a I had a good savings account. Okay. All right, right, good, 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 good. I good. Had good so, savings. So good. You're, that's good. You're smart that way. A lot of people, I got to tell you, Mike, aren't. You no, know, they, see, but that's the key word that was had. <laughs> ah, all right. So, so you burned through it. You, you, you had to use it, right? Yeah. So it says here yeah. you you ended and, up doing some hurricane power restoration stuff in Lake Charles. Yeah, I got called. Uh, that was the first year of COVID. There, we got I got called, and Buddy said, "Hey, you've ever have you ever done hur- hurricanes?" I said, "No." Would you want to go? I said, "Yeah, I'd love to, man. Like I, I'm I'm crying for work." So we went down to Lake Charles for Hurricane Laura. How long did that last? And being, uh, we were there for two, just about three weeks. There, and I ended up talking to some guys from the U.S. and I would forwarded my resume to them, and when our crews got released from that project or from that restoration it was not because the power was back on but we didn't have enough material to keep building so they let a bunch of a bunch of crews go while other crews stayed and worked with the material that was ready to enter you know to get the power come, flowing back in so i was gonna leave and the guy a guy from the u.s he he called me and said i can't let a guy with your experience leave I said, well, what do you mean? And he said, well, I, I can't. Like, do you want to stay and work for me? So we worked stuff out. I didn't know anything about working in the States or or how that was going to work. Well, wouldn't you know it? A few days after I got released, Hurricane Sally hit. Okay, yep. So I went, on Hur- I went on Hurricane Sally with that guy. Then we did Hurricane Delta. We were in Baton Rouge for uh, Delta when that hit. Um, and then Hurricane Zeta and then Hurricane Ada. It was a horrible year that year. It turned out I couldn't get the money from the U.S. up to Canada. Oh my legally. god! Wow. And yeah, it was. Uh, so you couldn't you couldn't send to, any of this money back home. That's what you're saying, right? I couldn't even get paid legally in the states. Oh my god! So so essentially, it was volunteer. But it it didn't uh, end up I being a volunteer, right? Did you get paid? Um. No. Not no. No. <laughs> Oh. No, it, it's one of those things, and I didn't want to, like you know, I was off, I was offered to get paid, and but I was paid for when I when I initially worked. There was a couple that I didn't get paid for, and I, I didn't want to create because my goal in eventually I want to move to the states or free flow back and forth. Right. So you didn't want to recreate any issues where that could it could hinder you from that being able to happen. No, not at all. Right. Not not at all. So, yeah, I came back up here. I did that. But when you're not hurricaning and you get back home, there's there's weeks and months. Like after that summer, there was, you know, weeks and months without work. Wow. And then, so what do you do? You sit in the garage and, and that, you know, why not have a beer? And so, 
So you got back on the bottle again, like it says. You threw the diet out the window. You got on the scale. It said you weighed two forty eight. That was uh, yeah, because I so I was down to about two fifteen, two twenty, and in pretty good shape. All right, that was my next question. And, like, and what had you gotten yourself down to? Yeah, that's what I was at, and then after the hurricane and drinking and and eating my crap, and kind of had a garage gym. I ended up selling off all my gym equipment and. Uh, and, and essentially just, you know, paying off a, a bill or whatever with it and then buying beer, you know, buying it. And for me, a 15 pack wasn't enough. If I was going to drink, I was buying two 15 packs. Is that, and up here, is that like pretty expensive? Is that like a night? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, it always amazed yeah, 15 me. To- and I've never been much of a drinker, you know. I, I, I haven't really drank myself that much on occasion with some friends or something for some fun, but. It always amazed me how much fluid, when I watch some people drink, how much they can intake, like, in just yeah. a, a short period of time. Like, I couldn't drink 18 bo- if, I couldn't drink eighteen bottles of water, even in a day, let alone in the, in the period of time that some people drink, to be honest. No, and, and I don't know how it happened, but it just, it, it just kind of turned into that. It just morphed into this. Hey, you want a couple of beers? Sure, I'd go grab two 15 packs. You know, my wife would have some with me. Yeah. She would drink out of the one out of, you know, we'd, we'd drink, but I mean, she would have five or six and I would crush 15, right? Wow. She might have eight. And yep. I, I would, not most of the time, we'd wake up in the morning and there's one or two beers left in the fridge. And how did you feel the next day? Were you okay? Well, the problem is I didn't really get hangovers. Oh, okay. I was. I was a little tired because I was up late, obviously, but come around eight, nine o'clock, I was up, you know, footloose, fancy free, cooking breakfast, doing things, <laughs> carry Some, on a regular day. Somebody else wouldn't even be getting out of bed. Yeah. But, but I kind of, I guess, saturated myself with it for so long. Yeah, I guess. I mean, I guess your body can build like an immunity to it, right? Yeah. And so what happened when I got on the scale at 248... It was 248.6. Yep. And I thought, man, here we go again. Yeah, that's so got to be I what you're thinking, thinking, right? Because you're heading in the wrong direction. Yeah. And I said to myself, like, man, okay, we've got we to gotta really start getting a handle on this, getting a handle on it. So I went and I, I reconfigured my garage and got my gym mats back down, put the pull-up bar back on the, on the wall and a little bit of weights that I did have left that I, di- I didn't sell off. And... I was mopping that I swept and I was mopping the floor. My wife took a video of me mopping the floor for Snapchat and just the, the tag on it was, uh, uh, he's hired or, or some weird tagline on it. Oh, cause you were mopping and she sent it. Yeah. And she sent it to me and I looked at that person mopping and I did not recognize him. I, I looked at her and I said, is that what you see when you look at me? Like, is that what you see? She said, yeah, why? What's wrong? I'm like, that is absolutely disgusting. Well, we're not going to hear that from them, though, right? No. Because the people... That is disgusting. And no fault of their own, but the people who love us don't want to hurt our feelings, right? So they kind of... They kind of just tell us what we want to hear instead of what we need to hear. But I I would prefer they tell us what we need to hear, right? Yeah, and her her famous line is, well, you you wear it so well. That was, you know, that's the famous line from her. Well, you wear it well, I don't even notice. Yeah. So I came to work for a shift at work. And then during that shift, uh, a friend that I graduated high school with, she had passed away. And I went home on the weekend, just three days off in the middle of the shift to go to the funeral. I got home from the night of the funeral and I we drank till that had to be four o'clock in the morning. And that as I was drinking that night, and it was about 3 30, 4 o'clock, and everybody was leaving. My wife and I were going to bed. I had this weird, weird personal epiphany. And I, we probably heard the line a, a thousand times, but it didn't mean anything to me until that night. Even as drunk as I was, it I don't like the person that's drinking. Like I'm okay for a couple of beers, mm-hmm. but then then I turn into a different person. And that motherfucker, that guy can drink. Wow. Yeah. You know, and people I don't, do say that, right? Yeah. And I don't like that guy. Mm. So 
I woke up that next morning. That was January 14th was the funeral, I believe. So January 15th would have been my first day with no booze. And I said, that's it. I'm done. No more drinking. And that, I didn't tell anybody. I just, in my head, I'm not doing it. Um, if someone offered me a beer, even at work to go for beer, no, I'm good. Uh, I got a, I made up, a, I just got a competition with a buddy over in Saskatchewan. We're going to try not to drink for a year just so I didn't get grilled on yep. why I want to go sober because it was still an internal struggle for me. So was it you, and, you wanting to go sober? Was that to get you back on track for your health and fitness or you just didn't like the guy that you were when you drank or both? Both, both, hundred percent, both. And I had bought a book. Um, I guess it's always been in the back of my head. I bought this book. It was called, it's called eat for life. Not that I'm giving him a plug or anything. Um, I bought it just on a whim. My son was at chapters getting some books. So I, I just grabbed this one. It was just called eat for life. And I started reading it after I'd quit drinking. It kind of just sat there and never, never was open. I, I've only read probably a third of the book, maybe. Mm -hmm. but I'd stopped on this one page and it had then the author and I can't remember his name off the top of my head. He, he lists food. He categorizes food with, with as a score, like what's phytonutrients, uh, micronutrients, macros, everything, but what's better for you and what's worse for you on these two pages. Yeah. And I just said to myself, okay, everything on the good side of the page where everything has an actual score, I'm just going to eat that stuff and see what happens and obviously start working out a lot heavier. I was moving. I was in a gym, but I wasn't really giving her, if you if you know what I mean. Oh, yeah. I was just yeah. kind of going through the motions. So I said, I'm just going to eat the stuff on this page. I don't. I didn't read any recipes in the back of the book. None of that. It just said, okay, kale, spinach, cooked mushrooms, raw onions, that kind of stuff. So I just started eating that, throwing diff throwing together different combinations. And the book kind of wants you to go vegan. Yeah, but I'm a, I'm a meat I'm a I'm an Alberta boy. We're we're, we're beef eaters, meat eaters. <laughs> so, like I said, I'm loosely following that book. The only thing I'm altering on is the beef and the turkey and the chicken. All right. So, how long have you? How long has that been? Since January fifteenth, sixteenth is when I started the diet. Probably the sixteenth I started the diet. And I don't say diet; it's more of just changing my food. And how has that and been going for you? As it, do you see? Are you heading in the right direction? Do you see progress? Last time I got on the scale, I was two nineteen. Oh well, okay. So how often do you weigh yourself? So it, uh, once every time I go home, maybe if I remember. So not a daily thing. You don't. You don't. You don't do it no, that way, right? I've, no, I did it one day at home just to see. And I woke up in the morning. I was two nine or two twenty one. At noon, I was 220, and at the end of the day, I was 224. Okay, so it so. just depends on what your intake and how much water you have. Right, it can fluctuate you know, so, when so I do much, weigh myself, yeah. yeah, so when I do weigh myself, it's if I do when I go home, it's the first morning I wake up. That's when I weigh it, and then I don't get back on that thing. And in all honesty, you know, how have you really stuck to that page? Absolutely. Absolutely. I even, cause I have a gluten intolerance too. And I love bread. My, uh, my mother's Italian. Oh. So pasta, <laughs> breads, all that, like it, some of my I have favorites. Intolerance, so I've learned how to make, um, to kind of substitute with that, um, like a rice flour flatbread, if you will. Oh, okay. How's that? Just to, you got to add some seasoning to it to make it really palatable, but it's, it's not bad. And I only, I only actually have that maybe once a week. Okay. So, so it's give me an all... idea. You, you go back to your hotel room at night, right after working. What, what is a meal that Mike would make? What does it look like? Um, a very common one would be a the ten, you know, the ten dollar ground turkey tubes. Yep. Um, I throw that in a frying pan, no oil, no anything. I just smush it all up and get it, get it cooking. I make my own, no, no salt, um, rub. Like a beef rub, and I yep. just like a seasoning, and I and I just I just douse it with that, and I cook that right up. Just as that's finished cooking, I dump in three or four leaves of chopped kale, mm -hmm. uh, cabbage. It could be um, 
yeah, any, any kind of cabbage, red cabbage, green cabbage. Uh, I think it's called Chinese cabbage, or I can't remember the actual name of it. Yep. On the store here, it's called Chinese cabbage. Dump that in bok choy. Um, and then just when that stuff's all cooking celery, and then when that's all kind of getting soft, then I'll dump spinach on top of it. Okay. And then wilt the spinach down with it and mix it all together. And then with that, that whole pan, I have one little bowl, probably the size of a fist a fist worth, maybe a fist and a bit. Then the rest is separated into two for the, in the morning at 10 o'clock and then in the afternoon around 3 o'clock. Okay, that's what I was going to ask you. So you must be eating at other times during the day too because that's not a lot to have for like a dinner. Yeah. No, but no. So I've had that. Plus I have my breakfast and the breakfast consists of, you know, two eggs and a bowl of my little um, Greek yogurt, peanut butter and honey concoction. Okay, my downfall... I always get hungry at night. Don't do you get hungry after eating that? I di- I did for the first couple of weeks on that on this little uh, diet change, and I was, but I was so tired. Uh, I don't know how to explain the fatigue because we work twelve hour shifts out here. And okay. I would get back to the hotel. I change. I'd go to the gym. I'm at the gym for about an hour, so it's an hour and a half basically from the time I leave the apartment until I get back and and then I eat but I was, I was so fatigued and so tired like my my strength was down everything was down and I didn't know if I was doing the right thing but I just I, I wanted to commit to this book give it at least 30 days to see yep but what this did and somewhere in that third week I don't know what happened but a switch got turned on I mean I energy guess- levels I guess they say it takes your body, you know, anywhere from 10 to 14 days to adjust to something new. And then, you know, because uh, people will do this, they'll, but they'll, they'll end up still being hungry. So, so you weren't hungry enough, but you were, you were tired enough that the hunger didn't keep you up. Exactly. So you would, you would crash because you were, you, you had worked so much and, and this was a big change for your body. So it was adapting to everything that you just, you kind of crashed, went to sleep crashed and and out and now prior to doing this no alcohol and this food program i've suffered insomnia since i was about 12 13 years old you know average two to three of hours of broken sleep a night oh, wow. sometimes four never in a row though right yep. so um right around like and i was sleeping with that that first two weeks and then all of a sudden that switch went off Another issue I'd had for majority, as long as I can remember, is chronic diarrhea. And I didn't want to gross anybody out, but um, example, I could have a Big Mac. Yep. And not to get into too many details, but 30 to 40 minutes later, the sesame seeds were floating in the water in the toilet. <laughs> so has that, it, it, so did you believe you had digestive issues? I'd been tested for Crohn's colitis. They've taken, they put cameras up me and down me and taken biopsies of, I think, everywhere in that track. And nothing. Nothing come back. They just said, that's the one doctor, the last doctor I saw, I said, that just might be your normal. And same as the sleep doctors, that might just be your normal. So has that changed? I have not had a runny poo for two months now, at least two months. Wow. That's great. And I'm sleeping. Yeah. And my sleep tracker, I average uh, five and a half to six hours of deep sleep a night now. Okay. So that's much better. So this, this is showing people that, you know, you can make an adjustment to your diet and it can change a lot of other things for your body. Yeah. So what about your energy levels? Energy's through the, like I, like I said, I, don't have a hard time getting up in the morning. And you're ready to roll when you get out of bed. Yeah, I hit the snooze once, and just for that nine minute countdown, it's it's literally just a contest to see if I can actually fall back asleep. Wow! For that nine minutes, and usually I'm up, and there's three or four minutes left on the clock before the second alarm goes off. Wow, that's great, Mike. And I'm it, you know I'm really proud of you what you've done. You know, I'm hoping a lot of people who listen to this understand that there's there's always another option to no matter how bad you think think things are or how bad off you think you are. I mean, you, you went to 86, right? You had to decide. I mean, that sounds like a goal. That sounds like a, a spot where you, nobody even wants to start from, right? You think to yourself, how am I going to start? I'm, I'm, I'm so far 
out of whack. But you got to start somewhere, regardless of where you're at. You got to start. If you don't start, you're never going to get anywhere, right? And that was it. Where Where do I start? And if and you, and if you didn't fluke, start, if you didn't down. start, where would you be? Would you be 350? Possibly. Like, I, I'm 6'1", so, I mean, I guess I wore it well. Yeah, I mean, but. taller, yep. Yeah. But, I mean, you know, I often tell people this, that regardless of where you are, time is still going to pass by. So do you want to spend the yeah. next six months of your life doing the same thing you were doing? Because the six months gonna, is going to go regardless, right? We can't just say, ah, I don't feel good today, so let's pause time. We'll, we'll restart yeah, time. Because the days are going to keep coming. Right. They're going to keep coming. They're going to keep passing us by. And when we look six months back, we could have made so much progress if we just started. But people get afraid to start. Yeah. Yeah. Well, even this this last belt when I was two, two, uh, 248, um, my my thirty six waist jeans were tight, tight. A lot of a lot of a lot of ones I put on, I wouldn't do the button up and just the belt. So did you know in your that mind that that things had slipped backwards? Oh yeah, because I mean, I so when I talk about that fifteen plus beers a night, that wasn't once a week. That was that was three to four times a week. Okay, so you know, so I, I, I had. Was, a, I had a question that you put down, and it was, why Why did I let myself go again? Do you have any idea why? I mean, I know you were going through a lot, but you knew where you I had was. come from, right? You had worked through so much adversity already with where you had started and where you had gotten to that I find I, I'm interested to hear the answer to that question of how why you just let yourself go back. I um, Over the last little bit, I've come to that realization I give up on me. Mm. I literally gave up. You know, you talk to everybody you know in, in the trade and nobody's hiring or a- anywhere else. I couldn't do anything. And I just felt like I was, and you know, I did beat myself up a lot. And I probably read into a lot of those conversations that w- weren't directed the way I took them or weren't meant the way that I took it. And I... I'd given up on me for sure, hundred percent. So why not just get hammered? When actually, right? no, I'm a fun guy. When actually, no one else had. Exactly. Right, but we. I mean, you listen to my show, so I talk about it from time to time. But we are our own worst enemies, right? You wouldn't let me talk to you if I was standing in front of you, Mike. Regardless if I'm your friend or not, right? And we're having a conversation, yeah. and we got similar beards, by the way. So you know, I like your beard. Um, yes. It's got a name. But I, I am the bearded beast, just so you understand. You can't steal that from me, okay? <laughs> no, my, 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 my beard is named Nevin, so it's Nevin the beard. <laughs> All right, we're going to get into that in a second, how that name came up. But if I'm standing in front of you and we're having a conversation, you're not going to let me talk to you and say the things to you that you're going to say to yourself, right? You'd want to punch me in the face. Yeah. So, so many yeah, times okay. we, we, we tell ourselves things that aren't true. That are not real. We that we would not we let do, someone else uh, say to us, but we do it to ourselves. And why do we do it? Yeah, it. it I don't understand. And it's, it's just the self negative talk is debilitating. It's the number the one killer it, of the hopes and dreams of so many people. Yeah, your dream ain't gonna chase you back. No, right? And it, it, it's not. And I heard that in a song a little while ago, and it really really resonated during this whole transformation of me is the, the dream isn't going to chase you back. You can wish and hope all you want. Yeah. It's but not unless gonna, you start chasing. Yeah. It's not going to chase no. you back. And unless, and no. regardless no. of what happens, we're all going to face adversity right through every single one of our, and we got to overcome so many obstacles if we want to get, because what, what's really worth doing. That's not difficult. Everything worth doing is difficult. But everybody wants the easy path, right? The road less traveled, the easy way. I had a conversation with someone today that they said to me, Bill, if I handed you $10 million, would you take it? You want to know what my answer was? No. no I wouldn't take it. And they're like, are you crazy? It'd be nice. And It'd I'm, be I'm nice. like, why would I take it? Because I don't want anything that I didn't earn. And as foolish as that sounds to say, you know what, I, I wouldn't take $10 million. I would know in my mind that 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 I didn't earn that. 
and I would have a hard time yeah, with that. So anything that is worthwhile is not going to get handed to you. That money to me no. wouldn't even be worth spending because I wouldn't feel that it was mine. Anything that I purchased with it, I would not feel like I earned it. No. No, I, I hear you there. And I, I wish people could understand where I'm coming from because they do look at me as I'm crazy. You know, but anything that I have accomplished in my life, I can promise you, Mike, was not handed to me. I've done the hard work. I've had to put in the time to get the things I have. People look at me and say, wow, nice house, nice car. You drive a Porsche. You know what? At the end of the day, none of that really matters, right? Those are just material items that we enjoy the fruits of our labor. But that, you can't take the money with you. You can't take it with you. You're right. I mean, you know, the suits they bury in, they don't have pockets, right? That's right. That's right. Um, all right. So you got yourself back on track. I had a question for you. And I wanted to yeah. know, what is it that you're doing? And how do you know in your mind that you're not going to fall back in and repeat the past? It feels different. If, if, if they came to you tomorrow and said, Mike, I'm sorry, we no longer need you. Um, we're going to need to lay you off. Okay. Would, would your immediate I mean, response be to turn back to the bottle? No, no, not just because I know where it's gotten me. Nothing good ever really come from getting hammered. You know, typically you got a less money in your bank account. You don't feel as good. Um, like what you know, as it got later in the drinking. If I was going to drink, I knew the next day at least half of it was going to be a write-off of just chilling out, doing nothing. Yep. So time. time it's a waste is, of a day. Right. Again, time is being the wasted. Days are going to keep, the days are going to keep coming. Your opportunity to progress forward and move forward and find something else, you're limiting by having to use half your day um, just recovering from a night of partying. Yeah, and just because you're so tired and just don't want to do anything. And it's literally just tiredness. I mean, I... I didn't, I've never gotten upset stomach or vomited heavily the next day, you know, from hangovers and stuff like that. So, or the headache, I didn't, I didn't have any of that. So I, that part of drinking, I didn't experience. I mean, occasionally it happened. And I remember when it happened, I'm like, man, if this happened all the time, I would never drink. Like how do people that get hangovers, full hangovers, keep drinking? Right. That I would mean, never have happened. Right. I mean, I don't understand sometimes how they can even function, but you know, I've I've really enjoyed listening to your story and 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 having this conversation with you. And I have one more question for you before we before we end the show. Um, actually, two okay. questions. Actually, two questions for you. I'd like to have you back on to talk about your progress and you know what okay. you have going on, and um, you know keep people informed of of how you're doing. But my last question for, for sure. you: What goals? What goals are you trying to achieve right now that you haven't? Have you set goals for yourself? Do you have do you have a, an ultimate dream that you're trying to reach? Um, fitness or in life? Let's go with, give me, can you give me one from each? Yeah. So fitness level. Um, I always called it operation. See my PP before uh, when I PP. <laughs> That's, That's great. When I first started the, doing this, it was operation. See my PP when I PP. Uh, <laughs> that operation is is well underway. So the goal would be to the point where I guess I'm, I'm going to say 220, 219, 220. I'm going to guess right now. I haven't been on a scale for a few weeks um, to get down about 215. So that the belt buckle doesn't drive into the underside of that belly on the front. Okay. That's the short term kind of fitness goal right now. In life, I'm working on trying to get a, business started in the u.s i had one i thought going long story there it's i uh i was i brought on the wrong business partner we'll put it that way okay that happens the wrong person to help me so that was another great learning experience as much as it upset some people in my life when i talk about it it to me it was hey you're never gonna know unless you roll the dice that's true so i rolled the dice right craps carry on um, I'm stuck in the mud right now in that aspect, but I'm gonna just keep on tread, just keep on running until I can get out of it. 
How old are you? And I want to come down there. And I'm 47. All right. So you Just still turned. got you still got plenty of time, right? I mean, we don't we don't have all the time in the world, but you still got time. Yeah. Well, I mean, I. That, that's again something I want to do is get that started so I can come down freely and do these hurricanes and storm restoration as much as we can. There's no greater feeling, I don't think, if, if any, you know any other power lineman, when you're down in Ponchatoula, Louisiana, in the middle of nowhere, and, and all you see is trees, and we've built power line for a week, week and a half, and we're sleeping in churches or detail shop, you know, with blow-up mattresses or wherever they can house us, and we throw that switch in and that power goes on, those cheers that come from the woods uh, and the people that come up to out to the road and block us and hand us and give us whatever they have that isn't rotted, right? Like it could be a bottle of water or a can of Coke or, yeah. or something. They'll give you anything. Just they, they, that feeling, the money's great, but that feeling surpasses everything I've experienced in this in 27 years of building. Yeah, I can't even imagine. So I I, I truly do appreciate what it is that you do. I mean, I can't imagine even being in some of those situations to see the devastation that has happened. Um, It's crazy. I I would actually, I'll I'll gladly forward you some pictures. Yeah, yeah, I mean. That we've taken from some of those areas. You know, you just don't, when you're not in that situation, you know, sometimes you you lack an appreciation for, for for some of that stuff and even an understanding of what it is that maybe a power line man does. But, I mean, I know when I don't have power, I'm not a happy guy. No, and we had power out for an hour at my house a little while ago. And, you know, my kids were frustrated. My wife, I was just laughing. I said, guys, like it relax. It's not, you know, here Celsius, so it's not 35, 40 degrees. Right. So what is that? About 100, 105. And I said, there's no humidity here. Go outside. Right. Let's go do something. Right. We don't get to be in. It's only a couple of hours. It's not just a switch we flip on. Right. And that 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 can be another conversation for our next podcast. But we've lost the go, sure. the going outside and you know, we've become so reliant on technology as great as it is it has hurt us in a lot of other ways that i would definitely love to have a conversation with you about that the next time but hey real quick before we end the show i mentioned how we were gonna you were gonna explain to me the name of your beard so what happened how did we get that name (laughs) well long ago i had i was working on this crew and there was an apprentice and he was a bit of a wild card you never knew what he was going to do and that is a literally another half an hour discussion just this guy his name was blake (laughs) one and he walked up to me one day after his many many things he did just to make you shake your head he walked up to me i just started growing the beard and he walked up and said hey nevin when you see mike can you let him know that we got to start framing that next that next pole and i looked him square in the eyes and i said blake th- i'm mike and he said i was talking to your fucking beard <laughs> that's <laughs> oh, that's that's, great. that's where nevin came from yeah so that's that's it's kind of stuck that that's a good story yeah, we're, since. all right so our next podcast we got to talk about technology and we got we're gonna we're gonna go over some stories that you have from being a power lineman how's that sound mm-hmm. Sure, that sounds great. All right, I'll be in touch with you, and we'll get that scheduled. Again, I apologize for having to reschedule a little bit on you. Um, This show will be going live in about 15 minutes. You'll be able to access it. I'll send you a personal link if you like. Um, But you can access it from everywhere that you always uh, access my podcast. But it'll be ready up and ready to roll in about 15 minutes. Oh, that sounds great. Awesome. All right, my friend. I appreciate you uh, coming on and talking with me and sharing your story for everyone because everybody needs to understand that as dark as it seems, right, you're not done. There's other opportunities. There's opportunities for you every day. There's there's other sides to the story besides just burying your head in the, stand, the sand and uh, telling yourself all those horrible things, right? I mean, we got other options. Yeah, I did, I did, it, for, I did it for too long, and if... Uh... If a small town Alberta boy like me can can whip his own ass and pull his head out of the sand, I'm telling you, man. Yeah, you sent me some photos can. and videos, man. You look good. Well, thank you. Keep keep rolling, brother. You. And um, yep. you know, we'll be checking in with you, getting you back on, and and we'll be going over your progress and having uh, having some fun. I got some fun questions to ask you the next time too. 
That'd be perfect. I look forward to it. All right, my friend. You have a good night. God bless you, and we'll talk soon. You bet, Bill. Thank you, bud. Thanks, Mike. I'll be remembered, but with you, Bill McDonald's the baddest that I would turn to. CEO with the shit that's a dumb motherfucker. You always win. There's no going on at the top of the crown. Rest thing on his head. The beast is alive. He'll never be dead. If he drunk before, bring it back to life. Push harder for it. Let us survive. Show courage and strength. It's okay to be scared, but don't let it stop you. Always stay prepared. Bill, show my school. They're just not beginning. Winners fucking win, losers. Talk about winning.